I knew I was like, yo, this is, this is it. Like if I don't make moves, like I'm either climbing this corporate ladder and I tried to like play that in my head of what that looks like, like staying at that same job for at least three years before I like make the next level up. And I was like, there's no way. Today's guest is a 24-year-old seven-figure entrepreneur from the States who spends most of his time traveling in luxury, but it hasn't always been like that. After spending many years working in corporate America and being completely broke at the age of 23, he was just completely fed up with working in the system and he knew that he would never be able to truly live the life he desired if he stayed there. Since then, he's been able to go on and build multiple companies, build a seven-figure Bitcoin portfolio founded the morning routine movement, built up over 10, 10 passive and active income streams, and he's been featured in magazines like Disrupt, Thrive, Entrepreneur, and Forbes, just to name a few. So please help me welcome the guy who went from working in the pizza shop and selling comic book magazines as a kid to now the founder and CEO of Credit Class, which is focusing on teaching people how to leverage other people's money so they can go and travel the world in style. My boy, Mr. Colin Yerkesen. What up? <laughs> Dude, for uh, for um, for off the rip right there, that was that was pretty good, man. I have to say. <laughs> that fired me up. I love it, man. Well, mate, that's that's an exciting short 24 years in your life. And and considering you've only been in the entrepreneurship game for the last year and a bit, right? Like that's as phenomenal to see what and hear what you've already done, man. So thank you, bro. I appreciate it, Morgan. It's uh yeah, I was I was super fired up. Like when we got connected, I'm like, dude, I'd I'd love to kind of dive in a little bit more in, into you, your lifestyle and, and how you've kind of created such you know massive success in such a short amount of time. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, you're you're living like so many people go and create success and they think success is all about money, but you're really showing that success is literally just living your best life, right? And and that's yeah. what's just so freaking cool. So man. I'd love to hear a little bit more about this. Like, take us back. You know, you're working at co in corporate America just a, just a couple of years ago. How did you go from that to <laughs> everything I just read off in, in the space of just a short couple, one, two years? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to bring you back, give you some context. Um, I went to school, college or university, as you would call it um at the university of arizona so like big party school i actually partied with a couple aussies and was friends with a couple aussies that, oh. that actually came out and went to school at u of a that'd be a um, bad a time big, that'd be a big bad hit time. <laughs> big hit for the aussies but yeah so went to school there for four years um was originally from new jersey so like went all the way over to arizona that opened my mind to like holy shit there's a lot out there um and and you know that's that's just how it all started really i got super inspired from going to college and then also being blessed to be able to go travel abroad, uh, study a semester in Barcelona during the summer uh, with all my friends and travel Europe. And like, you know, I just saw so much, as you said, like in such a short period of time. And then, uh, you know, I graduated college with a business degree and the next step was like, okay, like everyone's getting jobs. Like, okay, I guess this is the next step in life. So I, I got the first job, you know, I interviewed for, I got it. Um, and I had a business degree and like, I got this sales job that gave me the flexibility to go, you know, make my own schedule and outside sales and kind of create your own business within the business that you're working for. So that was like my excuse. And like, that's how I made myself feel better. I'm like, yeah, like I get to make my own schedule, whatever. So, uh, you know, I, I end up going right after college. I moved to Scottsdale. I, the first thing I do, I get an apartment. I get a car, I lock myself in and I get this job and I start the job. And within the first week, I knew I was fucked. I knew I was like, yo, this is, this is it. Like if I don't make moves, like I'm either climbing this corporate ladder and I tried to like play that in my head of what that looks like, like staying at that same job for at least three years before I like make the next level up. And I was like, there's no way. I, I can't function in this, in this environment. These people's vibrations are too low. Um, this is just not for me. So, you know, kind of had a 20, a 23 year old panic attack. And, you know, I was at like that crisis point in my life where, you know, I decided that I was going to get a job. I set myself up through college. My parents helped me. I took out loans. Now I got an apartment. 
I don't want to be here anymore. What the fuck do I do? Um, so that's when, you know, luckily I was blessed. Like I said, I had an outside sales schedule. So, um, I was passed over a bunch of, um, this old guy's book of business who just quit. He was my friend and he really set me up. So like, I just had it easy, man. I was getting deals done. Um, you know, I always met my quota and pretty much my book of business was just filled from the last guy that worked there. So I took advantage. I took advantage. I took the advantage out of that by just going home and starting personal development. I started reading books. Um, I, I found Tony Robbins. I found Ed Milet, Gary V. Gary V was huge for me back then. Just him yapping in my ear all day, like quit your job, you know? Um, and dude, that's what I did for like four or five months, just driving to work, listening to an audio book, getting fed up at work, but getting through it, driving home and then grinding and just figuring out, okay, there's this internet thing. There's personal branding. I read Crush It by Gary V. And I'm seeing all these kids that are, you know, 18 instead of going to college, making money in e-commerce or, you know, starting an ads agency. And I was like, dude, there's a whole nother world out there. This seems more like me. I get to go travel again, be free, make my own schedule. This is what I want to do. So, you know, within those months of just trial and error and, and really personal developing, all I did was just consume information for, I would say, six months. Um, then I started to gain some confidence. I started building on my Instagram more, started taking more professional pictures, writing motivational captions from the things that were inspiring me from the people that I was learning from online. Um, then I started going to networking events, getting around entrepreneurs, kind of steering away from my college friends that were just, you know, convincing me to go out on the weekends and get shit faced and, you know, not have any purpose over there. Um, so that's how it all snowballed, dude. And then, you know, from there, building my brand, um, you know, just led me into trying all of the different industries that are prominent right now, e-commerce, real estate, uh, social media growth, ads, like you name it, I've done it. And what clicked for me was none of the ones I just mentioned, um, which was kind of like, I could go into that story too. Um, if you want, you want me to just kind of say the whole thing? Yeah. Cool. So, so yeah, man. So I basically tried every single industry, <clears throat> none of them worked. And then I was like, you know what? I just want it to be done for me. There's this whole automation thing that's out right now, right? That everything can be automated. You just pay someone, they create you automated income. And you know, that does work. You have to find the right people. You got to have the right process. Um, and I invested, you know, I took out a loan, like a $20,000 loan. Um, cause I had good credit at the time and I invested this money with this guy who said he was going to automate me, my own e-commerce website, run ads and scale this store for me. And we'd do like a profit split. He scammed me 20 K, um, took the entire investment and just fell off the map. And then I had also $30,000 in student loans. And this was right when I quit my job and decided to go all in on entrepreneurship, because now I had this store that was supposed to be making me money. And then, uh, dude, that was it. It forced me to either, you know, go back home to mom and dad and say, mom, dad, I got 50 K and dad, I quit my job. I'm lost. Or say, you know what? I'm already, in, I'm already this far. I got this personal brand. I got like 30,000 followers cause I was investing in growth and, you know, actual branding. Um, you know, I just lost out on this investment, but why don't I take this time now to figure out how to make money on my own. And that's exactly what I did. I started helping people grow their Instagram brands. And then once I realized that I could remove that debt off my credit file and protect myself, I removed the debt and learned credit repair. And that's when credit opened my eyes. And then I dove down that rabbit hole deep. Um, and then from there, started producing content on, you know, how to educate people on credit, how to travel for free, how to remove debt through credit repair, um, getting the best credit cards, sign up bonuses. And, you know, from that led to my first company, which is credit class. And it's, a, it's almost like, like, you know, I, we always hear everything happens for a reason. And whenever anything really shit happens in my life that I'm like, far out, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of get really excited about it because I just <clears> know that everything's happening for us. So it's almost like if that guy didn't scam you at 20 K, you probably wouldn't have gone down the path of looking at how you repair your own credit and gone down to what you're doing 100%, now. 1000%. It all needed to happen to get to where I'm at now. And, you know, I, I asked for it, bro. Like I literally asked for that path by, you know, pursuing the personal development, going out and going to networking events, investing myself. And, you know, that gave the signal to the universe, like, all right, let's give him his thing that he's going to do, but it obviously wasn't going, you know, how I pictured it. And it never does. So never. anyone listening, it's like, 
if you so you know much desire this end result of like let's say fame a beautiful family a big mansion some vacation homes you can get all that but the vehicle is might be completely different than what you think but just always keep that end result because most likely the universe does get you there because you're always thinking about it, it will happen but you don't know how it's going to happen with who it's going to happen or what vehicle it's going to happen with yeah, I always say like you can always choose your end result, but you can never choose the journey, you know. And yes, the the we had a I think I shared this on another podcast one time, but I was away with um with my girlfriend at the time. We we're on a holiday, and we we're staying in this really nice resort, like a five star resort. We bowled out on it, and they kept having all these things like stuff up on us. And I'm someone who never I never complain. I just what whatever it is it just is, and yeah, that's part of the experience. And we kept having a lot of things stuff up to us. And then I just said to her, I said, I'm not going to complain about it, but look, what I'm going to manifest is actually just getting this whole stay for free. You know? And she goes, yeah, okay, let's do it. So I'm like, I reckon we're going to get all our money back. I can manifest whatever I want. Then what happened was the manager comes down and says, Hey, look, we feel sorry for these few stuff ups. Come and have a seafood dinner on us tonight for free. I was like, okay, beautiful. We go along to the seafood dinner. I get seafood poisoning at the freaking dinner bro the doctor comes to my room that night i'm on an iv drip like i was fucked up six i've ever been in my life we checked out you bet your ass we got a refund on the entire fucking thing i got exactly what i wanted but if i hadn't known the journey that it was going to take to get there i probably just write out pay 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah that, that tends to happen in life yeah, dude. Like, but it's, it all makes for a good story though, as well. Every, everything along the journey is strengthening you. And, uh, you know, I noticed so many, so often that people let things like that cheat them out of the big picture. So how do you kind of, how did you not let that thing, you know, $20,000 getting scammed straight away as well? Like, how did you not let something like that kind of defeat you or, 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 you know, cause so many people can look at that and be like, fuck, you know, this is, this is why I can't do it. Yeah. But then you have to look at it and be like, well, this is why I have to do it. What was the difference? Well, at first I kept denying it. I just kept thinking, dude, it's gonna, he's gonna not do like, this isn't gonna happen. Like I literally was so in shock. Um, so I just kept pushing it off and just doing whatever I could control. And that's really all you can do. You got to do what you can control. So I couldn't control the fact that, you know, I, I left a situation in someone else's hands and he obviously didn't have my best interest in mind, but I can control, you know, all the actions I'm going to take from here on after this point. So, you know, I can DM a hundred people today and I could try to sell them, you know, whatever product I was selling at the time. Um, so, you know, I was doing like Instagram growth. So I just focused on that. And, you know, as the truth came um, and it came to be true, I then said, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to literally deal with this problem head on. I'm going to look at my credit file and I'm going to see what happened. And that's what I did. And most people would just sh shy it off and uh, you know, they would just not look at that stuff and then their credit gets worse. For me, I just, you know, battled it head on, checked it out and then realized, okay, maybe I can get this stuff fixed. How can I do that? Then I started using Google researching, get it off. And then boom, now I know credit. So, mm. yeah, that's, I love it, dude. So you looked at it just for what it was, like, instead of being a victim to it, make poor me, got scammed. You looked at it, well, this is what it is. How can I fix it? I love exactly. that, man. Exactly. So you mentioned you did like a whole bunch of different things. How, how do you kind of, Cause that's, that's the problem most people have these days. There's so many things out there, credit, so e-commerce, network marketing, real estate, <clears throat> insurance, so many things. How do you know what's right for you? Dude, literally like I could still feel that anxiety of not knowing what I'm supposed to do. Like if, like before you got, you know, now you're like, you know, you have momentum, you got your business. I got my business. Like, you know, you kind of forget about that stuff sometimes But when you sit back, like I could literally remember just the other day, it feels like like a year and a half ago, I'm sitting at my desk reading Ty Lopez. I'm mapping out all this shit. And then it's like, what is my passion? What am I supposed to be doing? Like all these people got all this shit. Why can't I just be like them? They got it all figured out. How do I find my thing? And, you know, you got to just stop spending time thinking about that shit. You got to just do, you got to do, 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 do. So the more action you take, the faster you're going to figure it out. Um, and that's what I started doing. Like I literally consume for six months, just knowledge on knowledge on knowledge and recommendations from all these people. Finally, my brain started overflowing into action. And then the action becomes just like nothing, bro. It's, it's automatic. You wake up and you're just doing shit. Like you do your morning routine, you cross, you got your five things you got to do for the day. Okay. Let's try wholesale real estate. Went and knocked a thousand doors in a week. Didn't work. Okay, cool. 
that fucking sucks. Let's try doing ATM placement and try running an ATM business. Boom, 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 boom. Do that for a month. Doesn't work. Okay. Can't do that. What else? Maybe I can do branding. I, I like talking. I like motivating people. Got some momentum on personal branding. I don't mind taking these stories. I don't mind talking to people and telling them what to try um, and giving value on services or credit. Okay, cool. This is maybe what I should do. That one little piece that you find, you got to just explore more down that. The things that feel like they flow for you, that's what you got to focus more on. And that's, that's gonna... little by little. Yeah. Okay. So it's more so just really trying things out to see what feels right, not the actual results. Because so often in this, it, it you don't get results fast. You no, know. So like you're you saying, so you did something for a week, but you did something for a month. Did you kind of quit because you weren't seeing results, or did you quit because you're like didn't feel right. feel right? Doesn't feel right. Didn't feel right at all. And like you'll get results faster if it feels right. Yeah. Like it's just it's just that simple. So like for me, once I found out that credit was like a passion of mine. I was just researching credit so much for, you know, let's say three weeks. And then finally I was like, let's share this shit. Like, I know this stuff. This is fun to talk about. I like credit. I like travel. This aligns with all of the things that I love. So this should be easy for me to get out there. Boom. I made my first credit video, got a hundred shares. Um, that's it. I'm in. That's it. Boom. Created three every single week tons of shares on all of them. Like now I'm building reputation around credit. I have credibility. Um, and, and that's it, dude. And then once you find that vehicle, just beat out everyone else, work mm -hmm. harder, create more content, give more value and become that figure in your space. And then you win. It's that yeah. simple, but you got to love, love it because if you don't love it, you're not going to put the time into it because it's just, it's just not your passion. It's not something you're going to spend five hours doing and look and blink and be like, where'd the time go? You're going to be dreading it the whole entire time. Dude, tell us about this morning routine movement you founded. Yeah. So, I mean, right up around this time, dude, I was so into personal development and I was like, all right, I want to, I want to model my life after these people, what they're doing. It obviously works. So let's start, you know, with the first thing, what the hell do people do when they wake up? They don't just roll over and look at their phone and watch, you know, Twitter and, and YouTube. When they first wake up, they like literally spend an hour to two hours to themselves and they better themselves every single day. So I kind of crafted my morning routine after all the different people that I met and interviewed and, you know, read books on. Um, and I started it when I quit my job, like even a couple months before, bought like two whiteboards in my old apartment. And I just started writing everything down, the things I had to do, started meditating, mindfulness, um, you know, stretching, writing down affirmations, writing down what I'm grateful for at the current moment in my situation. I didn't have everything I wanted, but I was grateful for what I had and expressing that gratitude allows the universe to give you more things to be grateful for. Um, so that's number one, literally gratitude. Like you got to come to a realization and be okay with where you're at, because if you don't accept where you're currently at, you are not going to be able to move on from there because you're blaming people. You're not taking full responsibility for your current situation. I love it. So your main thing in the morning is just gratitude. Is it focused around that? Or do you have any other things? No. Or Yeah. So I do a whole, it's literally like an hour and a half to two hours every single morning. I Run us through. What's day. it look like for you? Yeah. So I wake up um, immediately. I'll, I'll go, I don't look at my phone at all. So I'll put on my music. I have Sonos, the speakers. I put on like meditation music, um, really peaceful stuff. Put that on, run downstairs, put on a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for that. I do a full body stretch, get the blood flowing, um, you know, start to open up, grab my coffee, come upstairs. And then I'll sit in my little, uh, my little, I have like this nice comfy little couch over there in the corner and I'll write in my journal. I've filled out probably like 20 of these things since I've, you know, quit my job. Um, and every day I'll write down on the right side, I'll write 10 things I'm grateful for. Uh, on the left side, I do a power list. So five things that I can take action on uh, for that day. That's going to get me closer towards my goal. Um, then below that, I write the four agreements. If you have ever, ever read the book, four agreements, um, I just write them down every day. They literally became a part of my life. Um, and then I read a love letter to money. The love letter to money is my current you know, relationship with money, how I'm feeling about it at this time. When I didn't have any money and I was 50 grand in debt, I had to like talk about it and get myself through that with, you know, looking at money in the face and saying, 
hey, this is where I'm at right now. I got $51,000 in debt. I got this credit card that has this on it and this that isn't. And literally just looking at it in the face every day and working towards getting out of that. And once you release that, you know, debt off your shoulders, everything just gets exponentially better. And then, dude, I just write love letters to money every day about what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to get it, um, you know, how it's going to manifest for me. And it really has, dude, you know, a year and a half later, I'm a millionaire. Um, so it's pretty freaking crazy. Um, and I'll continue to do it every day. After that, I do um, I do the Wim Hof method. Have you ever heard of that? Yep. Yep. So I do yep. Wim Hof. I do three rounds of that. Can you I explain a that minute. a little bit? Can you explain? Like, cause I've, I've heard of it. And I think it's one of those things, like a lot of people heard the name Wim Hof. But what do you actually mean by Wim Hof method? Yeah, man, it's it's incredible. It's a, it's a breathing exercise. So it literally like opens up your airways. It changes the state of your body and your mind. So like you'll literally change states. If you're tired and sluggish, basically what you do is you do, um, I would say intervals of like a minute of... So deep breath in, deep breath out, deep breath in for like a minute straight. And then you're going to exhale and hold. So hold for like two, three, four minutes, as long as you can go. Then you breathe in really deep and hold for 15 seconds. And bro, you'll literally like, you almost trip. Like you Mm. get this such crazy consciousness, you know, you'll enter different forms of your consciousness. And, um, it's really incredible. Like your body will feel like it's floating and you really just like, you tap into a deeper intelligence, dude. And I do it every single morning by the third round. Um, you know, you could barely like some people pass out. Um, but you know, it's totally safe and it's, it's fine for you. Um, but it's, it's just a, a way to enter different States in your mind. That's, it's wild. You're making me think like, like, cause I'm really strict in my morning routine as well, but I also hate, I hate routine. Yeah. So the funny thing is like, I hate mundane things. So sometimes I, I wake up and it's like, I've got my like non-negotiables in the morning, but like, if you were to ask me, what do you do exactly every single day? It's, I still don't have an exact, duh, 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 but I've got a rough amount of things, but that's one thing that like, I've tried it before. And you know, you said like some people pass out, like, I swear by the end, I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like I'm tripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. It's, it's pretty crazy. You gotta, you gotta just try it out. I love it. Like at first I was uncomfortable and like still in the morning, the first round's pretty brutal. Like you're getting uncomfortable. You're getting dizzy from breathing in and out and in and out. But after you do that first breath hold, you're like just in another state and you just want to keep doing it. And it feels incredible. After that, I'll meditate for 10 minutes. Cause at that point I'm in a fully different state of mind. Um, you know, I'm relaxed. I feel light. I meditate for 10 minutes and then I say 10 out loud affirmations about things that have already happened, but time just hasn't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Um, So then I say that and then I'll read for 20 minutes, do 10 minutes of abs. And then I start my day at around like eight o'clock. Love it, dude. What? So you're up at what? Five, six a.m.? Five thirty-six. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I don't set an alarm though. You don't? No. What time do you go to bed? How much, how much sleep do you get? Uh, seven, eight hours. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 10 o'clock right. every night. Yeah. You're in bed by 10 up at five thirty ish. Yep. Love yep. it, man. Love um, it. but, but I will say when I do travel though, I get fucked up. Like when I went to Hawaii, mm. I went for a week, I came home, I was sleeping like four hours a night for the whole week because my body was not adjusted, but I'll still try my best. Um, but yeah. And then like on the weekends though, I'll, I'll free up, you know, I'm not like a freaking maniac, like, uh, army guy, you know, I'll free up my space and I'll go to bed at one o'clock in the morning. I'll go out with my girlfriend. We'll get dinner go to a show, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of versatility. Yeah. You got to man. I'd love to hear, let's dive a little bit more into the whole credit space. Cause we were chatting a little bit before this show started and I'm, I'm curious to know, cause I know in America, the whole yeah. repairing your credit, having bad credit and all that kind of stuff is a big conversation but not so much in Australia. So can you run us through a little bit about like, how do you kind of help people, I guess, leverage credit and travel the freaking world? Yeah. So basically um, we help people leverage other people's money. So obtaining multiple credit cards from multiple different banks that extend them lines of credit at 0% interest. So it's basically like free money for a year until you got to pay anything back. 
no interest incurred. You don't owe them anything on top of what they already gave you. Um, so we leverage the shit out of that. So we, we build up our relationships. We build up our personal credit, which, you know, I, my dream clients and my perfect clients are the ones that come to me already prepared. You know, they've been taught by their parents or, you know, they've taken a course on credit. They have great personal credit already, but then we dive into the business credit. So I have a coaching program that I teach, you know, all my advanced techniques of getting 30 to a hundred thousand dollars at 0% interest on business credit cards. Then we take that money and we put it into like Walmart automation. We'll build them a, uh, a Walmart store and they sell third party on Walmart and they scale the store using their business credit cards. Um, you know, no money out of their pocket when they're in my program, they can pay for the service with credit card too. So literally zero dollars in cash out of their own earnings out of their savings whatever um then we use credit to also leverage real estate you know we teach them how to put zero down on a on a home using um you know conventional loans fha loans and then using their credit to put on the down payment and also furnish the home on zero percent for 12 months and then their tenants will literally just pay off their credit card for the whole year um and then after that you know we go into even more advanced lending techniques um, with like crypto. So nowadays and in the future, I don't even think credit's going to be around. Um, you know, the, I think the central banks are in huge trouble with Bitcoin, um, you know, growing so fast that, you know, eventually I think Bitcoin is really going to be the standard and people are going to be lending against their Bitcoin. Um, and it already has started, you know, there's loans where you could put up your Bitcoin as collateral and they'll give you a hard money loan, literally deposited in one day after you back your crypto, like, let's say you want to borrow a hundred thousand dollars in cash. You give them $200,000 in Bitcoin and you just back it in the account. And then they'll just give you hundred K in cash. So you never have to sell your crypto gains. You can leverage the shitty dying dollars that we have, put them to work and then pay, pay it back. And then you get your crypto released. So it's just a whole nother space that, you know, that I use now. Um, you can access so much capital within minutes um it's pretty crazy because the mm. collateral is there but is, is that would you not say it's kind of like kind of irresponsible like encouraging people to get into debt to travel or do you have a way to kind of help them make money through this no so i mean the, the trap the travel thing is like so i have i have two programs i have credit class which is the course um that's like 997 um that is literally teaching people how to build their personal credit up um, how to leverage that personal credit to build income and then how to travel using their credit. Um, that's like what I, that used to be my main focus, but now, you know, I've evolved into my bigger coaching clients and that's where we focus all on business, making, you know, money with credit. Um, and, and it's no, it's not ir irresponsible because we're using 0% business credit, um, you know, where the, where your score is not dropping, you're leveraging lines at 0% interest. And then also if anything happens, if it's business credit, you can bankrupt that business and you're not liable for anything. Right. Right. Yeah. And what, what was the Walmart stuff you're talking about? Like I'm, I'm assuming, is this only something that can be done in North America, USA, or is this a global thing or? Um, so I actually have a client in Bali right now, but he has companies in, he has his LLCs based in America. So you do need an LLC based in the U S you need a U.S. business bank account. You need an LLC. Um, and then you need a, a, a Dunn's number, which is basically business credit, how they track your business credit. That's all United States. Um, and basically with that, I have a company called leverage investments. That's my e-commerce company. And that's where we scale all of our clients in Walmart. You know, we build them a, uh, a third party seller account. We list thousands of products on there and we scale it using credit. So, you know, to get them $100,000 in sales a month, they're going to need bigger credit lines of like $50,000 to basically buy out all the products um, from their customers. Because when a customer purchases a product on Walmart, you have to front it. Because in order to get the funds released, your customer has to actually get the product and then Walmart will pay you out. So in order to make the entire e-commerce business work with Amazon, Walmart, whatever you're doing with drop shipping, you need to have your own capital and why use your own cash when you could just use the banks. So we do everything with the bank's money. We don't use any of our own money. Um, that's how I've been able to grow my crypto portfolio um, because I don't, I, I don't save. I don't do anything like that. I don't spend cash on my business. I use credit. They, they buy all my business expenses. They scale my business. They run my ads. They, they pay my employees. They do everything. 
all of my cash and all my profit going to Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you know, quadruples my net worth. Right. I love this. It's, it's, ugh, I love it. So talk to us about Bitcoin though, bro. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'll, t- I'll tell you straight up. I'm still on the fence. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm more just ignorant to it. Um, I just don't get it all. I get, I get it. I get crypto. I get it. I'm, I'm just, yeah, the perfect way to explain. I'm completely on the fence. I would not say to somebody go and buy Bitcoin, but I would definitely not say don't do it either. I'm just completely, so I'm, I'm, I'm keen. Yeah. Why, why do you think you said you got over a million dollars? Uh, is it over a million or you got multiple seven? Yeah, no. So it's, it's, it's over a million. It's not yeah. multiple seven figures yet. It will yeah, be in a few be. months. Um, <laughs> you can quote me on that one. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I can give you, I can actually email you. I just made a playbook. Uh, it's called the Bitcoin playbook and I made it yesterday. I'm going to give it out for free as an ebook. Um, but I could email you over the, uh, the playbook. It's a, it's basically like a PowerPoint, but it'll help you, but I can give you a little rundown right now on why it's going to be the future. And, um, you know, it's going to win. There's, there's no other option. Basically right now, what's happening all around the world is central banks are, are printing money. So the dollar, especially the U S you know, the global reserve currency is the U S dollar right now. That's what everything's based off of. Um, it's the strongest currency it has been for, for decades in 1971, Richard Nixon, the president of the United States took the dollar off the gold standard because they couldn't fund the wars. Um, the wars were too expensive. They didn't have enough gold to back it. So they, uh, they simply removed the dollar off of the gold standard. So it no longer had to be backed by gold. Instead, it was backed by the trust of the government. Since that day, everything's been corrupt. We printed trillions of dollars. We devalue our currency and the rest of the world gets screwed by it. So now, you know, in Europe, they're, they're printing money. In Australia, I don't really study Australia, but I'm sure they're doing it too. Um, basically there is no such thing right now as a fixed money. There's, it's just endless. So, um, inflation's going rampant. Um, you know, the poor get poorer and the rich get richer because the rich are smart and they hold all the investable assets. They hold real estate, they hold stocks, they hold bonds, they own companies, and now they own Bitcoin. And what's happening is the dollar is collapsing and we're just printing endless money and hyperinflation is going to occur. And the poor hold zero assets and the rich hold all the assets. So their net worths continue to go up and the poor continue to go down because the dollar is being devalued. So what does Bitcoin do? Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer version of electronic cash that allows payments to be sent directly from one party to another. So from you to me without using that third party, like the bank. So we no longer have to trust anyone else and it's peer-to-peer and it's decentralized. So we don't need anyone else besides me and you. We are our own banks. And uh, Bitcoin is completely public. So nobody owns Bitcoin and everyone can take part in it. Um, there's a fixed supply of Bitcoin. So there's only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be in circulation. It's hard coded. You cannot print more of it. It is 21 million and that's it. So it's scarce. Gold, you can always find more. You can mine more. And it's not truly scarce because there's, we don't know how much gold is out there in the world. Bitcoin, there's 21 million. Um, then there's the, the scarcity factor. So why is there only 21 million? Every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that's mined, basically miners um, are the people that create uh, the Bitcoin supply. So whenever they solve a block or a problem of verified transactions, they're rewarded with Bitcoin. So when it first was created, you were uh, rewarded 50 Bitcoin for each block that you mined. Now, you know, at the fourth halving, we're only rewarded 6.25 Bitcoin for every single block. So and then in the next four years, it's 3.125. So every single four years forever, Bitcoin will literally be cut in half. The supply gets cut in half. And then in the year 2140, There's no new Bitcoin that will ever be produced ever. So, you know, basically we have, finally we have hard money. Um, All the institutions are getting into it. You know, BlackRock, um, trillion dollar, biggest hedge fund in the world is buying Bitcoin. PayPal buys Bitcoin. Um, You know, Jack Dorsey, who's the CEO of Twitter. He literally has Bitcoin in his bio. There's people like Michael Saylor, 
who owns a, uh, a billion dollar, um, it's called MicroStrategy. He owns a tech company. He put all of his cash reserves, his company's treasury in the Bitcoin. He quadrupled his company's stock in literally the past three months. Um, so like literally it's happening right now. And this is the first time that you could front run Wall Street and win just by starting to convert your cash into Bitcoin. And eventually it's going to be the next global reserve currency. So I've just figured, you know what? Screw all this other bullshit. I'm 24 years old. I'm making a ton of money with my businesses. I'm not going to invest in stocks. I'm not going to invest in anything that's not Bitcoin. And I just invested all in Bitcoin and it's worked out amazing. Yeah. Do you spend it anywhere or are you kind of like just holding it and letting it grow? No, um, you never, you never want to spend Bitcoin. There's so no that's point. the idea though, right? Like, but if it, if it all turns into a currency and nobody wants to spend it, you spend it once it turns into the global currency. So, it so hasn't right now yet. we're in the adoption phase. We're in the accumulation phase. So, you know, there's, there's people buying it every day. It's so scarce and the price is going up and down because there's still all this speculative around it. So once it's finally fully adopted, and, um, you know, it's not fluctuating as much anymore, which will probably be in the next two decades, then you can spend your Bitcoin and that's going to be the, the currency of the world. Right. So it'll eventually kind of find its value and just kind of sit there. So right now it's all about. Right now it's about stacking as many Satoshis. So it's a, there's a hundred million Satoshis in one Bitcoin. So instead of buying a whole Bitcoin, you know, no one, not a lot of people can do that right now. It's $33,000 for one Bitcoin. Um, you just buy Satoshis. So it's the units inside of Bitcoin. So stack as many sats as you can and hold on for dear life and just get rich. Yeah. What well, what do you think um, or like your predictions or what have you kind of researched? What do you think the value, what are they thinking the value is going to kind of come to in this next one, two decades when it kind of settles? Um, so this year, um, it'll easily go over 200,000 a coin. Um, but in the next one to two decades like are you saying it's final peak yeah like are they talking about that they got estimations yeah. or yeah it's it's pretty wild man i mean people say 10 million to 50 million a coin if it overtakes real estate's market cap of 100 trillion yeah yeah like it, it it's mind-blowing man like this is going to be if it works which it has a better chance of it working than it not you know i have it has a better chance of it hitting a million dollars and hitting zero dollars at this point with the amount of the smartest people in the world are in Bitcoin right now. When you start to research it and you start to dive deep into the rabbit hole, just how I did with credit. Now it's with Bitcoin. I realized that this is where all the smartest people, all the money, everything's going in the Bitcoin. So I was like, then this is the next move. Why, why do you think people like Warren Buffett aren't really? Cause he's, he's not really on the side of Bitcoin, is he? Yeah. He's, he's too old. <laughs> He's, I mean, dude, you look at him and he's been bailed out like the past five years by the banks and the fed. Like he's, he's not even, you know, he's, he's a very famous investor, but if you look at his recent history, he's already getting out of Wells Fargo. He's bought, um, you know, he doesn't believe in Bitcoin because it's tech. He doesn't see that far in the future. He didn't grow up with this kind of stuff. So he's hedging himself with gold, which is literally Bitcoin, but shittier. So Bitcoin is digital gold and Warren Buffett is now investing billions of dollars into gold mines because he doesn't believe in the system. He knows the system's collapsing too, but he won't take the chance on Bitcoin. And there's a lot of stubborn people out there like that. There's another, another guy named Peter Schiff who knew about Bitcoin back in 2011 when it was like a dollar, has been talking shit about it ever since. And he's still talking shit about it. And he's like the most hated man in Bitcoin. And he owns a company called Schiff Gold. He's a gold bug. So there's a lot of people that are gold bugs, but then there's a lot of gold bugs that are now getting into Bitcoin and adopting it as well. And then eventually what's happening is like, you look at Raul Paul, who's a famous macro investor. You look at um, Anthony Pompliano, you know, they were all in gold too. Now they're all Bitcoin, 95% of their net worth. People go yeah. all in. Yeah. It's super interesting stuff, man. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Like I think I do have some Bitcoin. I do have it. It's like, I'm like, I'm a, like, I think it's very important to, you know, always have an open mind, A, but like, like play, play with everything. Like I own stocks and shares, but also Bitcoin, you know, yeah. and you play with everything until you realize that nothing else comes close to Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause so you gotta just do your own, do your own research. Yeah, exactly. No. And then it's so like, 
you know, I just always know like the, the, the most expensive thing always just to close mind. Like I would hate to look back in 10 years and be like, fuck, you know, they were all right. And be like, sweet. I'm glad I, I bought some, I'm really glad I put some money in. Uh, or you look back in 10 years and be like, and now if it does work for me, like, wait, well, at least I know for certain that I gave it a shot or whatever. Right. And because exactly. I've talked to some people that invest in just shares and stuff. And there's, there's so much speculation, right? Some exactly. people just like just protecting kind of normal share market and things like this. And they're like hating. Then there's people that, that hate the other thing. It's like, well, what is real? And it's important to kind of do all your own research and make up your own opinion and make your own decision. That's the most important thing, right? hundred percent, dude. I mean, you just, you just got to have an open mind. You gotta, you gotta really listen to everything. You know, some things are going to be bullshit, but some things might just be the next thing. And you might just, you know, overlook it because you're too, your ego's too big at the moment, or you're not humble enough to take everything in one step at a time. And that for me, you know, when I started making a bunch of money and the literally everything collapsed, the pandemic was announced. It was like a dream for me. I always wanted to be in that situation where shit went down and I had money to invest because millionaires and billionaires and world leaders are created in pandemics and in, you know, economic collapses. So that was my time. Like, okay, no bullshit. Let me look at every single asset class and let me find what the best, you know, opportunity is for me. So I went in stocks. I did all ETFs. Um, I learned about bonds. I learned about gold. I learned about, you know, investing in companies. And then I found Bitcoin and that was it. Mm. You're all in on this. All in on one thing. That's how I've always been. I mean, I don't, I don't see the need to diversify. Like if I'm going to lose it all, okay, so what? I can get it all back. But why, if I believe in it this much, why do I go 50% in Bitcoin, 50% in stocks? Doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Man, this has been a really interesting chat. Um, what, you know, for someone listening to this, you know, maybe they're kind of young and they're stuck in a corporate job and they're like, I want to get out and do something. What is your, like, let's say, what is your three top tips, I guess, from kind of escaping the rat race to go and create your dream life? Three things that people can be focusing on. Yeah. Stop caring what anyone else thinks about you. Focus on your own happiness um, and stop thinking. Go do shit. Like literally like just get up and start working. Um, you know, we all do it. We all daydream and daydreaming is great because that's how you come up with the ideas um, to go do what you're supposed to do. But if you have like an urge and you have a passion around something, um, there's a reason why it's in your brain because those visions and those urges and those passions, they wouldn't be put in your mind if you couldn't go out and achieve them. Something put it there for a reason. So like, if that's always in your head and it has been as a kid, or like, you feel like you should be doing something, you should be doing that thing. It's put in your head because you are supposed to accomplish that. So that would never be there if you didn't have the potential and the passion to do it deep down. So, you know, really just stop caring what people think too, because that's the most, th most important thing. Like when you take things personally, um, it ruins everything. Like, like you shouldn't care what anyone thinks about you not your parents, not your, your friends, not even your closest friend, family. Like you need to do what's best for you. And you're the most important person in your life. And way too many people waste 10 years, 20 years, even their whole lives listening to their small group around them. That's been negative their entire lives and limiting their dreams and their beliefs. Bro, this is huge. Uh, <laughs> I love it, man. Bro, I've loved having you on. Again, to know you, hearing all about this, this is freaking epic. Um, where can everybody go and find you, follow your stuff, learn more a bit, a little bit more about you? Yeah, so um, you could just search me on Instagram. That's probably the best way. Um, it's Colin Yerkeson. And then uh, you just click the link in my bio and that will bring you everything I do. Um, there's free eBooks in there. You can join my credit class community. You can join my coaching program. Um, and then I also shoot YouTube videos. I usually come out with like two to three a week. Um, so tons of free value, tons of ways to get in touch with me. Just shoot me a message. I'll get back to you. Um, and yeah. I love it, dude. Man, all right, to wrap up this interview, I got one final question for you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. If you were to go back to your 18 year old self and give him 30 seconds of advice, what would it be? Dream bigger. <laughs>